Hey guys, today we are checking out Reolink's 12 megapixel bullet style security camera. A little bit of a different review. We're going to try something new, something extra creative. So the camera that we're looking at today is model number RLC 1212A and it was not provided to me by Reolink. That's because I'm using this camera for a specific personal project and I'm actually going to be taking it apart to accomplish my goal. This is outside the normal usage or guidelines and I run the risk of damaging the camera. I picked this one up for just over $100 Canadian or about 80 American and they often go on sale. So I'll drop a link in the description so you can check out the latest price. Here outside of my house, I installed this Hikvision camera on my fence many years ago and I just love it. It's an awesome vantage point and one of my most frequently used cameras. And I record all of the footage inside on my PC using the security camera management tool, Blue Iris. I don't like, however, how it looks on my fence. It's too noticeable and I'd rather something that blends in more something that's more integrated into the fence. Something with a clean finish would be awesome. So before I get too far ahead of myself, here's what's on today's menu. We're going to unbox the camera and see what's included. Then we're going to run through a typical camera install scenario. Then we're going to dive into my project, 3D printing a fence post cap and disassembling the camera. If I don't destroy the camera, we're going to follow up with some footage and camera specs. Okay, let's jump into the box. Okay, so rushing through this, we have some paperwork, a reminder to update your NVR if you're using one, a drill template, oh cool, a newly updated window sticker, and a user guide. Next, we have a short Ethernet cable for setting up and testing the camera inside before installing it in its permanent location. This is the weather sealing coupler, which we'll get into shortly. Then we have this foam sticker, which applies to the inside of the mount to provide a tight seal to the mounting surface to keep out moisture and bugs. Next, we have a bag of screws and anchors. I'll be using my own in my example. Lastly, of course, we have the camera metal shell, nice solid build. This feels like a high quality product. The cables are a good length too. At the end of the cord, we have three sealed connectors, a 12 volt connection followed by a reset button followed by an ethernet port to connect the camera to a Reolink NVR or a home network. It does support PoE or power over ethernet, so you can power the camera using the same network cable from the NVR or from a PoE switch. Now here on the front of the camera, we have two IR lights for night vision. These turn on automatically in low light situations. Just above that, we have a spotlight. It can be activated in three ways, using the flashlight button right here, on a schedule, or even when motion is detected. We're gonna test that out shortly this evening outside. On the back of the camera, we have a micro SD card slot for cards up to 256 gigs, which holds about 72 hours of continuous footage or footage of motion being detected. This means that the camera doesn't even need an NVR. It works as a standalone device with just a camera and a micro SD card. And lastly, we have the mic, which is located right here and the speaker here. We'll test these out a little later. Okay, so let's jump in to see what a typical install would look like. First off, let's install that foam piece behind the mount. Now we're gonna feed the wires through the grommet. Plug in the camera and tighten everything up to complete the seal. In the first example here, we have a mounting surface with a hole to run the camera's wires. This could be an eave, a junction box, or a hole in the wall. Once everything is lined up, add the three screws, point the camera in the desired direction, and tighten the mount. Now if there is no hole for the wires, the cables can just exit through a slot right here on the bottom and then follow the same process, fasten the screws, point the camera in the right direction and tighten the mount. Now for me, I'm not gonna be using the mount. I actually designed and 3D printed this vinyl fence post cap and I'm pretty excited about it. This is the first version with more updates to come. I want the camera to fit inside of this tube hole here on the front. The problem is the camera is a little bit too long with the mount attached. 
and even when I break down the mount, the silver part right here attached is in the way. Now this piece actually has two functions. It's a ball joint, so the camera can pivot. But secondly, and more importantly, it acts as a weather seal on the inside where the wire inserts into the camera. There's a little rubber ring that goes around the wire that gets sealed when that silver piece is tightened up to the camera. So if I take that out and put the camera into the mount, it fits perfectly, but I'm missing that wire seal. If only I could replace that with something similar. Maybe I can 3D print something that will fit. Oh yeah, here's a better look at that seal. So let's open up the camera and unplug the wires. I can now feed that little plug out through the hole on the back of the camera. Let's remove the seal and the ball joint. I measured the size of this ball joint and it's a 12 millimeter fastener. And after a quick 3D print, I have a short piece that will slide on over the wires. So next let's replace that rubber seal, feed the wires back in through the camera and plug in the clip. And now we can put the camera back together. Feed in the wire seal and tighten the 3D hollowed screw and secure it to create that weatherproof seal. Now when I install the camera into the mount, it fits great and I actually have a little bit of room to spare. Wow, cool, yeah, this thing looks amazing. I couldn't be happier with how this project is turning out. Okay, so let's do a couple of quick tests to get this set up before heading outside. Now you could plug the camera directly into an NVR, or like in my situation, I have the RioLink NVR on my network, and it's automatically set up to pick up any new cameras that have been added. So, and as you can see here in the RioLink app, the NVR just added it. Now let's reset here and turn off the NVR feature to stop auto adding newly found cameras. This is also the process if you don't have an NVR. I'll plug in the camera into the network switch. The RioLink app will automatically pick it up as well. You just need to initialize it. So we're going to go through that process right here. Uh, activate it by giving it a username and password and then give it a name and that is it okay so we have the camera set up and we have about a half a second of delay here not too bad okay i'm happy with the results let's go outside and get this set up so here's the location where i want to install the camera on this fence post right here facing my house i already have an underground ethernet connection out here which i installed in a previous video let's pop off the old cap and plug in the camera now all the wires and the old mounting gear fits perfectly inside of the post. And here are a couple more shots of the setup. This looks awesome. Up next we're going to check out some footage, some specifications and some features of the RioLink app. Let's get us rolling with some time lapse of day and nighttime footage. I am quite impressed. This, this looks awesome. You can even see the stars here over my house at night. The camera has a 1 over 2.49 inch CMOS sensor with a resolution of 4512 by 2512. When I export the footage, the specs are dead on. The camera has a 4mm lens with an aperture of f1.6, letting in lots of light at night. If you put this all together, it means that we have a field of view of 93 degrees by 49 perfect coverage for my scenario out here on the post. Now I measured it off and my house is 70 feet or just over 21 meters away from the camera. As I walk towards the camera at 70 feet, the license plate is pretty grainy. At 60 feet or 18 and a quarter meters, it's a little better, but it isn't until 50 feet or 15 and a quarter meters that we can confidently read the plate. Now jumping over to nighttime, with no IR lights on, it's complete darkness out here. And I can actually see a lot better with this camera than I can with my naked eye. Pretty cool. And in the complete darkness, it isn't until 10 feet or about 3 meters away that we can read the plate. And that's actually better than I expected, given how dark it is. So let's pop those IR lights on. And as expected, the license plate is reflecting back into the camera. 
Now facial details start to become recognizable at about 30 feet or just over 8 meters away. Now we're going to check out the camera's spotlight. Now the detail is good but facial features don't become recognizable until about 20 feet or just over 6 meters away. Oh yeah and check out how bright this spotlight is. Perfect for making shadow puppets. Okay, so let's do some more distance testing. Let's see when the camera starts to pick up my motion and turns on that spotlight at night. And also, I'll get a notification. Yeah, that's uh, 60 feet. Okay, we're at 50 feet. There we are. There's the 50 foot mark right there. Okay, next, we're gonna do the same test by day. Okay, so here we are at 70 feet. It picked me up right away. Up next, we're going to talk about audio. I obviously won't be using this camera for two-way communication out here in the fence post, but I'm going to remove the cap here so that the mic and speaker are exposed. Okay, this is what the speaker sounds like on the camera. And here we have an audio test of the camera's microphone. All right guys, the first iteration of my 3D printed fence post mount is complete and I already have some ideas on some future updates. After some quick disassembly and reassembly, I didn't destroy the camera and I was able to make it fit perfectly inside of the new mount. As for the image quality and app features, I couldn't be happier. Links are in the description, so do check those out for the latest prices. I hope that you found this information helpful. If so, leave a like and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any future home tech DIY projects you can do yourself. Thanks for watching.